Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and today with the what? With the examples on the, the convolution. So I remember in the previous video I have uh, told you about the, 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 the convolution that this is convolution sum. So you know it uh, that this is not convolution sum. In the continuous time this is convolution integral. So, so that's a mistake I made in the previous two videos, okay? So, correct that. So, we start off with some simpler examples. Let's say my x of t is the step signal u of t. My impulse response h of t is also u of t. And y of t is unknown. So we know that y of t, the output of the system is computed by the integration negative infinity to positive infinity x of tau, h of t minus tau and d tau. So which means that if I first draw the graph, so this would be like this. If this is the, uh, wait, first with respect to t, you know, if this is t, so my x of t which is equal to h of t which is equal to u of t would be like this one. Fine. Next thing that you do is you, you change the variable. So you have your x of tau and h of tau. So this is now if my tau x is and this is if my x of tau which is equal to h of tau which is you know equal to u of tau. So this is my x of tau. Now the next thing you do is you, you, you reverse h of tau. So you time reverse it. So, so it would be if this is the time axis, h of minus tau would be like this now. A mirror image about the y axis. So depend, now we have to shift. We have to shift. Well, we have to shift what? We have to shift to h of t minus tau. So depending on this value of t, this could either be negative and this could be positive. So first, let's say if I have the negative case, if my t is less than zero, so what does this mean? That you have to shift your signal, that is h of minus tau, To the left by t units or I told you that the signal would start at negative infinity and it would end at this t where this t is some negative value so now if I if I draw it so this would be my graph if this is your uh, tau axis this is now h of t minus tau so this would end at negative infinity this would end at t. Start at negative infinity and end at t. So this is my t of t, t minus star for t less than 0. The next thing is the product. So the product is between what? x of tau and h of t minus tau. So if I represent it like this, if this is my tau axis, so the product would be x of tau, which is like this, 1, and with h of t minus tau, which is like this. So have a look. We don't have any overlap. We don't have any overlap, which means we don't have any product, which means we don't have any integration, which means we don't have any output. So no overlap. So this would imply what? That the y of t is 0 for t less than 0. This is your first case. Fine. Now the second case, if my t is greater than or equal to 0. So in this case what happens, you have to shift the signal which is h of uh, minus tau to the right by t units. Fine. <coughs> sorry or, or, or what do you do <coughs> sorry 
your signal would start at negative infinity and it would end at this t with this t is some positive one. So if I draw it graphically, so this is tau, this is h of t minus tau, this would be your t. This is one point. Now in this case the product, the product would be like this. If this is your tau x's, so the product is between x of tau, which is something like this, and h of t minus tau, which is like this. And then you have the overlap over here, till some value over here. So, the output that I would be writing is y of t, this were now the integration, so the integration would not be from negative infinity to positive infinity. The integration would be in the region where the overlap is. So it is from 0 to t. So the integration would be from 0 to t. And what do you have? The two functions. The two functions. The first is a u of tau. The second is a u of tau. And the integration is with respect to tau. So which means that you have 1 and 1. So 1. So integration 0 to t. You have d tau. So the answer would be integration of, of, of uh, d tau would be what? It would be tau and the limits would be t and 0. So now if you put the limits, so your y of t, this would equal t. And t and this is t. Wait, 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 wait let me write it with this other color. Then my y of t, this would equal t or t greater than or equal to 0. So if this is 0 for t less than 0 and it's t for t greater than or equal to 0, so I can write it that my final solution, final solution is what? y of t, this is equal to, for t greater than or equal to 0, you have t and it's 0 for t less than 0, so you can multiply a u of t with it. And you know what this t times u of t is, this is a ramp function r of t so this is my final output so we have a property from here we have a property one property has been deduced that u of t convolved with u of t will give us a ramp of t fine and that's the final answer so this is example number one so for the next example now i i remove i remove this Okay, the next signal you have x of t is let's say uh, the same u of t which I removed and h of t is now the impulse function, the delta signal and y of t is unknown. So again following the same steps, what do you have? You have your x of t and let me also name it as x of, uh, well wait, x of t would be like this, fine and then your h of t would be an impulse h of t is an impulse 0 fine then you have h of minus t would be again the same thing uh, which is equal to h of minus t fine because this is located at t equal to 0 so now what you need is you need x of tau so x of tau is again the same signal x of tau would be like this Just changing the variable 1 and the impulse. Now again, so delta of t, uh, to, if you have to shift it to delta of, uh, wait, you, you need an h of minus tau first. So h of minus tau uh, is again the same thing. Wait, let me draw it over here. h of, let's say with the tau x is I have drawn it with the black color. So if this is my delta of my uh, delta of minus tau fine so now i have to shift this uh, delta of minus tau to delta of t minus tau so again we would have two cases 
uh, so I would write it over here. We would have a t less than zero, which is let's suppose my first case. So I'm not writing the whole story again, that you would have uh, this and that and this and that. So you need to shift the signal toward the left by this t unit. So if this is the, the, the case, uh, so if this is my delta of t minus tau, this is the tau axis. Now the impulse won't be located at this value of t. Fine. And now you have to take the product. So the product, uh, what would be the product? So it would be like this, your tau axis. So x of tau, which is this black, and it's multiplied with this delta of t minus tau, which is what? Which is this. So you don't have any overlap. So y of t is 0 for t less than 0 again. And the second case is what? That if t is greater than 0. So let's say my second case is that t is greater than or equal to 0. So now if you have your delta of t minus tau. So this would be an impulse, which would be located somewhere at a positive value. So now the product would be, how would be the product? This is my tau axis. The product is between x of tau, which is like this, and between delta of t minus tau, which is like this. This is at some value t. Fine. So uh, now if I, uh, if I first do it stepwise, let's say my y of t, so this is the integration negative infinity to infinity, you have x of tau, which is u of tau. So I write it as a u of tau, and your h of t minus tau is now delta of t minus tau. Fine. So now this would give me what? This would give me uh, u of tau at t equal to tau. Why? Because now this value would be sampled. We know from the sampling property, negative infinity to infinity, x of tau, and then you have an impulse t minus tau, or let me change the values. Uh, it's t, and then you have a t minus tau, so this would give you an x of tau. So over here have a look, it would give me what? It would give me u of t at t equal to tau. u of t at t equal to tau. And it's again u of t again. t equal to tau you put it, so you have it again u of t. So we have another property deduced from here. We have another property that if u of t is convolved, with a uh, impulse function that is delta of t, this would again give you u of t, and that's it. So, uh, I believe I've taken a little more time uh, trying to make it colorful, trying to make it understandable. So, uh, let's say these two are enough for this video. We continue with the examples in the next video. See you in the next lecture very soon. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Goodbye.